In my career, I have had several experiences of working with contaminated site problems. And I will give you a summary of a few of the bigger ones in just a moment. But the most important one is that this lecture that I'm giving you now is actually in press with the uh, Rome Institute of Public Health and uh, they have a World Health Organization collaborating center to deal with contaminated sites problems in Italy. And I've played a part in their work over the past few years. So this lecture will be coming out in print soon. I can't say in three months or four months, I don't know. 那今天的演讲会讲到很多，就是关于那个污染地区，它曾经过去在参与的一些案例。其中最重要的是这个整个系列的内容，呃，将会放在，因为它是过去这这一两年那个意大利的那个健康局他们，呃，有一个密切的合
than the Formosa number six complex at Yunlin. 那第三个是在当初的苏呃，这在一九四零年是当初二共的一个很重要的一个军火钢铁炼钢的基地。那跟呃呃，苏苏尼博士在过去曾的，他在前两天有去看过台湾的六轻，比起来的话是好几倍以上的在那个那个范围。那但是是一个很大的环境。And the whole purpose, I, I'm sorry, I've already mentioned in Italy, much World Health Organization uh, research is being done in this area, and a special supplement of the journal will be coming out in a few months' time. So for people who are interested in contaminated sites and the use of epidemiology, I would recommend that you get a copy of that special issue of the, of the Italian uh, Public Health Journal when it comes out. 那我们刚刚讲到，就是这篇他的相关的工作，会都会放在那个意大利即将要出版的那个工作手册跟未来的政策里面，呃，也会在 WHO 的 framework 底下。所以如果大家对这方面有兴趣的话，他欢迎大家呃持续关注，然后未来在他的网站上会提出这样的相关的动态，可以去拿到这本书。And most recently, yesterday, I was taken to see the Formosa Number、no. Six Nafta Cracking Complex in Yunlin. It was very shocking to me to see. Face to face, some of the people, um, some of the people involved in the uh, work to try to see justice, social justice, uh, for the people who live in the, the county and the neighbouring counties, and of course the workers must be concerned as well. 那最后一个是就是台湾云林的六轻的那个工厂，他昨天有去，没有去到工厂里面，但是有遇到很多在那边当地工作的居民，还有工呃 NGO 团体。以及相关的学者，那他觉得是非常震惊，可以第一手的看到台湾现在的状况。So I'm going to just give you the examples of contaminated sites. I'm going to tell you why this is an important subject for public health, because it involves ethics, and I'm going to distinguish different contexts between the need for the question of doing more research. Or is there enough research, and rather we need action, and between historically contaminated sites and where we have sites experiencing ongoing contamination, where it's not a historical problem but an ongoing problem, and then I will show you a framework for trying to make an ethical decision. 那这是他的今天的大纲。其实最重要的是，他想要告诉大家，为什么在伦理的探讨，在呃探，在我们探究那个污染地区健康风险是很重要的一个问题。我们必须要界定范畴，这个范畴是不只是在需要或不需要做研究，呃，那或者是这个这个健康的污染问题是过去的问题，还是现在继续进行式的问题？种种这一些其实都是很重要的。那所以最后他会提出一个，就是如果我们有一个伦理和伦理的观点的一个呃决策的过程的话，会需要什么样子的一个架构 ？Now I said that epidemiology is the best science or the science that is necessary to address the problem because this is the science that helps us to see if people exposed to contamination. Are actually at risk of illness as a result of that exposure. 那我简单提一下，流行病学其实他认为是一个最重要的一个科学之一，因为它是一个应用科学，它探讨的是人所受到的健康风险到底是不是是什么样的来源，然后我们要怎么样去更好的去面对它，然后让我们的健康能够整个人类的健康可以持续得到维持。所以它的职责是在呃告诉政府应该要做什么样子的健康决策。So epidemiology is the science that informs health policy. Now it is very uh, humbling to realize that when we elect policy makers into government, we must recognize that they are not necessarily trained in science. They may know nothing about science. And although science is the Foundation of public policy, whether we are talking about health policy, economic policy, social, environment, you name it, whatever the government is uh, sees as its jurisdiction, there are many other interests that the policy maker has to consider in addition to science when they make policy. But science is the basis for uh, rational policy making, where you have evidence. 
。那我们必须要知道，就是当我们要选择一个政治人物或一些决决策的中心的时候，我们必须要知道他们他们在决定任何议题的时候，他们其实背后有很多的考量，不是只有科学上的考量，包括经济的、健康的、社会的、教育的，各式各样。那后面还有更多的选择跟决策。可是科学是能让这些政治人物。呃，他们能够有一个合理而且理性的一个决策的一个很重要的基础。Thank you.、Um, I want to point out to you that oftentimes, going back as far as 1983, that's 33 years ago, Clayson and Halpern said that industry's offensive against the regulation of health and safety hazards. Uses academics to downplay or deny the seriousness of the hazards. 那想要强调，在一九八三年的时候，这个很重要的一个学的两的两位学者，他们提出这样一句话。这个有在大家的翻译本中，就是呃，其实有一些呃企业或者有些工业的那个他们的他们是作用呃，他们是企业投资，他们希望就是阻止大众知道科学的证据，他们会用各种的方法。And here is a cartoon about. The man in the street who believes, who's read in the newspaper that Teflon, which is the product that makes it easier to clean pots and pans and frying pans and so on, there was some concern in 2004 that it was linked to birth defects, and the manufacturer of Teflon says, "Don't worry, the accusation won't stick." 那这是一个很可爱的那个政治讽刺漫画，在讲到二零零四年的时候，那个杜邦的那个事件出来的时候，那左边这一位是一个就是可能是一般人，他在很关心说啊，铁氟龙对于我们健康有问题有有危害吗？这个铁氟龙过去这么好用这样，那那个胖胖的代表的是杜邦公司的企业，他们就说不用担心，那根本不沾锅，就所以一直是他们会呃他们会找人来处理这件事情。And what he's really saying is that he will find an academic. Who will downplay or deny that Teflon causes problems? 那当然就是，其实就是杜邦公司他们会去找一些其他的科学家来去显示说，其实没有任何的健康风险，不用担心。Now corporations create, according to this judge in 1982, 80% of our gross domestic or gross national product, and this judge in the United States recognized that of all The entities working, corporations have the most potential for good or evil in our society, and that was in 1982. I'm sure today this number is more like 90 percent. 所以一个很重要的一个美国的法官在一九八二年讲过这样一句话，就是企业现在占了全国，呃，全世界就是在全国的经济体上面是一个最有影响力的的一个权利，所以他们会对于不管是作恶或作善都是最好的、最重要的一个呃角色。So the problem that we have when we do work as scientists and we study something and we find a result that the establishment or the powers that be or the corporate leaders do not like, they will tell us that it cannot be true. They will deny that there is any possibility that you found a problem. 嗯，那就是这有一个很经典的一个一个过程，就是。企业或者是背后的一些黑暗操守是怎么样去呃针对，就是他们不想要听、不想要让大家大家知道的东西的一个一个动作。第一个就是他们会他们会拒绝，他们会说这个都不是存在，不是真的这样。And if you insist that they must be wrong and that you are right, then they will cause delays by asking you to do more research. And that was in the beginning. I asked you to bear in mind that sometimes you can be asked to do more research, but those delays. Are not necessary and can only allow the status quo to continue for many more years or many more months. 那如果你继续还是想要把你所知道的东西发表出来，或是遭到总公众的话，他们接下来会想要延缓你的进度。那比如说，他会告诉你说：“我跟以前做更多的事情，我我觉得你的东西可能做的还不够正确，你可能这方面这方面需要再查证之类。”这个过程就是，呃，像他说，可能会花个几个月，或甚或甚到几年。那在这个期间，他们就可以让一切就是就是风平浪静。So they will cause delay by causing you to go back and do more research, and they may even find some scientists who are willing to manipulate science in a corrupt way to show that Teflon is not bad for you or tobacco is not bad for you, and that causes 
delays and it causes division among the scientists. So they will just slowly and slowly make decisions. And if you still show them that you are correct, they will then try to find any reason to discredit you. And there are examples of that in two movies, one from 1983 with Meryl Streep in the movie Silkwood, and another movie, Aaron Brockovich with Julia Roberts in 2000. 那呃，如果你持续想要把你的结果很很就是很坚持要发表你的结果的话，他们会想尽办法来重伤你。有两个很很有名的好莱坞的电影就有写到这样子的案例。第一个是那个梅丽史翠普在一九八三年的斯克伍事件故事，然后第二个是那个朱莉亚·罗伯斯拿到影后的永不妥协。Many of us would not do science deliberately for bad purposes. If we follow the golden rule, we would not do anything that is something that we dislike. We would always want to treat others as we would want them to treat us or our loved ones. 其实有就是黄金守则，我们我我们理论上人都有这样子的能力去知道说我们应该要怎样子的道德界限。比如说这也是这个圣经的新旧约还有佛教里面说到的，就是我们不希望人家怎么对我们，我们就应该要做这样子的事情。So we have to do our level best to do the best work we can as scientists. And if we find other scientists that are not doing good work, then we should tell them that they are doing wrong. The, the, the work they're doing is incorrect. Dr. Sosman, you've added two explanations. So we, as scientists, or as we want to do the best thing, we should do our best. We should do our best. 然后，而且我们要去知道说，谁在做不对的事情的时候，我们要尽我们要尽所有的力量去。Every professional society today has guidelines to keep ourselves to do the honest work, to do work honestly, and we have core values and mission statements that direct our activity. In public health, our job is to maintain, enhance, and promote health in communities worldwide. We work to protect the public health interest above any other interest. 那这个也有在大家的中医里面，这个就是这所有的不同的领域，可学术领域或是职业领域上，我们都有一个一个我们的呃我们的使命跟我们的目标。那在公共卫生的领域，我们所有的力量就是我们希望能够维持或是增进或是提升呃整个人类族群的健康。那这就是我们的那个最大的使命。This, this is a useful cartoon showing that we're on the same planet, but we work and think about the world from different perspectives. Here is the headline in the newspaper for the person who works, in the, the, the man in the street or the person who works normally, as compared to the person who works investing in the stock market, the stock exchange on Wall Street in New York, and the same headline for this group, 705,000 new jobs create panic. For the people on Wall Street, for the person in the street, 705,000 new jobs create hope. 那这是一张的另一个讽刺漫画，很生动的表现出，就是一样的一样的结果，呃，一样的事实表现在不同的人的里面，他们会有完全不同的反应。第左边这边是就是一般人听到说哦，有非常非常多的那个工作机会释出，就是哦带来很大的希望。当然右边那边是华尔街，他们看到这样的结果的时候，是完全就是大受惊吓。惊吓。嗯 ，I'm not going to go through the slide. I think it's on the screen. There are several techniques that we use to create bad science, what we also call in English junk science. But just to show you that there are different techniques that people who do not have the public interest as their focus, they can use because the science is not a basic science, it's applied science. So it's what we call a soft science. And it's possible to manipulate the comparisons that we make in the science. 
。那这个主要在讲的是，就是所谓的垃圾科学，或是呃不好的科学，其实重点就是因为它利用大众对于科学专业并没有那么一定程度深入的了解，那去操纵这个应用科学上面。因为我们在做抽样调查分析的过程里面，都有实验设计的问题，那它就是用各式各样实验设计上可能的一些一些方法，蓄意的让结果导向他们想要的方向。All right, so the, uh, in our field, there are principles that we are supposed to follow to be ethical in our science. One is that we must respect the individual person's right to determine for themselves whether they want to participate in research or not. We're supposed to do good from our research. We should do no harm in our research. And we should also be sure that there is a fair allocation of risks and benefits to all without discrimination. 那在探讨人类的健康，整个这有一个生物伦理，这里面就是一些最基本、最一定要注意、一定要有、呃、一定要、一定要符合的一些合理的假设，在任何的学术上面。那呃，就是包括这四个，我们已经解释在我们的中文译本里面。And when we take the medical ethics and we transfer it to public health ethics or environmental ethics, the question, the other principles are environmental justice, who is taking the risks while who is deriving the benefits. The polluter pays is another principle which is designed to discourage people from polluting and if they are caught polluting they should pay for, for remediation. 那在刚刚说到那个生物伦理那个最基本之上，如果我们在做的是一个呃，就是环境的环境的研究的话，我们必须要增加几个，包括环境的公公正性。呃，这这就在谈到说是谁在承担这样的风险，还有是谁在获得这样研究的结果的利益。另外一个是污染者付费的一个概念。那在这里面，我们就要了解谁是污染者，然后他贡献了多少，我们才知道要怎么样去收费。Our job also in public health is to protect the most vulnerable people in society, the fetus or the unborn, children, Aboriginal people, the elderly. We must involve communities in our research, have steering committees to make sure that the work is relevant to the community, and we must always have integrity in, when we, in our conduct when we do research. 那在公共卫生的领域里，我们我们的几另外几个很重要的是，比如说我们要保护最就是社会里面最最容易受到伤害的，包括未还没有出生的孩子、小孩、原住民，然后老人等等。那另外是我们必须要就是让社区的人可以参与在我们的研究里面，让我们的研究真的是为他们而设立。最后是我们必须要有一定的那个研究的。研究我们的研究是有那个完整性跟有足够的信任，是在呃同才之间，在其他的呃公共卫生的同僚之间也站得住脚。And there's always a tension or a conflict between the different principles. Not one is more important than the other. They are all there to keep us honest in how we are making decisions with our research. 那当然，在刚刚所说的这一些考量背后，都有很就是需要注意的呃考虑跟压力，所以没有一个任何东西是最重要，或是其他是相对比较不重要，全部都要一起列入考虑。那你必须要在其中去，就是知道怎么样去平衡。So the topic of epidemiology is one that is involved in assessing risk. Is the community at increased risk because of some contamination in the environment? 那一个传统的那个呃风健康风险的评估，就是我们在谈说，呃呃流行病学的研究里面，我们知道哪一些哪一些风险会造成多少多少的增加的一个呃呃健康的效应。So with with our risk assessment, when we try to see if there is a problem, this is one method or one framework that we can use. First, we see if the hazard exists. Somebody may say there's an excess of heavy metals, or there's an excess of um, PM 2.5s, or whatever it is. We have to assess if it's real. Then we see if people are being exposed. We see if they are vulnerable to the hazard. If they are vulnerable, we might do a risk evaluation. This is where epidemiology comes in. 
When epidemiology has determined if there is a risk or not, we have to identify a mechanism for communicating that risk to the community. And finally, we have to know in advance how we will manage the risk. What policies? Will there be compensation? Do we have to clean up the environment? What do we have to do?环境负荷造成的健康风险的一个过程第一个我们要知道到底有没有那个有害物质的存在所以你要先做一个有害物质的评估当你觉得有的时候第二步是这样的有害物质是不是真的会让人体受到影响那如果你觉得是就是你的研
My job in that was to do an ethical analysis according to the framework that I showed you before. So the first question was, the key relevant information has to be brought together. The biologic, the economic, social, political or ethical and knowledge gaps as well as the basis for these facts. We have to identify all the key stakeholders, all the players, all the people with an interest in the situation and the most appropriate decision makers or legal authorities. And then we have to identify the key values and concerns of the stakeholders as well as any potential risks and benefits. 那他在那个案例里面的角色是就是去做伦理性的分析就是看这个案子有没有做到一个完善的伦理决策那所谓的分析就是包括你要去决定说在这里面已经得到了那个相关的资讯是不是已经足够包括生物性的经济的社会的把
。那他们现在正在努力，就是呃，说服加拿大政府要做出这样子的宪法上面的改变。So what we must do is distinguish between the community needing more research or more action. 那现在我们应该要去谈的是我们。呃，我们的社区如果它是有健康风险，或是它希望有更好的社会的话，我们是需要更多的研究嘛，还是我们需要更多的行动 ？This is a question that is very relevant right here in Taiwan at the Formosa plant right now. The plant management will tell you to go and do more research, to count things better, to keep. They just want you to go away, and they want to keep doing things the way they're doing it. I would suggest that. Given what I saw yesterday and what I had to breathe yesterday in the air, that it's time for action, not for more research. There's always time for research, but sometimes we have enough knowledge to have action. Then we can revisit the action every year. If we find that the action was too severe, we can always relax it later if we enjoy if we miss the pollution. 那就是呃，就是回回复到他在台湾的经验，他去过六星的附近，就是云林跟彰化那一带去看过。那实际要在那里呼吸，要在那里看，他觉得其实以六星的例子来说，我们其实真的不需要更多的研究。研究永远都有时间，永远都有人愿意去做研究。但是呃，常常行动会因为呃需要更多研究而拖累。那以六星的例子来说，我们需要的是更多的行动，尽快去达到就是更好的一个一个调整。That's it. Thank you very much. I, I just want to summarize by saying, all of the theoretical framework that I showed you is what we as professionals consider when we try to advise government. Because our job in epidemiology is to inform the policy-making process, and that's how we do ethical evaluation and judgment. 那呃，今天就是呃 ，Dr. Sosun 的演讲就到这边。